Hello everyone and welcome to something a little bit different. Not something I haven't ever done before, but something that I haven't done that often, and that is a comparison video. This is not a proper figure study, not an enhanced edition, none of that stuff. This is just me comparing the three different Dark of the Moon sound waves that I have, specifically because I just got my hands on the uh, New Age XM1 Mista, or Mista, however it's pronounced. I think I'm inclined to pronounce it Mista because I used to work at a coffee shop, but regardless, I just wanted to do a comparison real quick. From left to right, we have the Takara MB07 Movie The Best Soundwave, which was their, a couple years back, re-release of Human Alliance Soundwave with a much more, let's call it, movie-accurate paint scheme. Then, of course, we have New Age XM1 Mista, or Mista, whichever. And then down at the end here, we've got Studio Series 51 Soundwave. And in case anyone was hoping there would be any kind of accessory stuff happening, there's not going to be any accessories because I just wanted to compare the individual figures to each other. Right off the bat, I feel like the Studio Series is kind of the outlier in that it's a little bit dingy and kind of, I don't want to say bad looking, but it's definitely the weakest looking of the three. Not because it's tiny, it's just $20 worth of toy versus more than $20 and a lot more than $20, so I, I would hope that the other two would look better. Anyway, since we've got them all lined up like this, let's just talk about height real quick. As you can see, when the legs are fully extended, MB07 is the tallest of the three, with XM01 coming in just below that. Looking at the general proportions and silhouette, from what I understand, I'm not going to bother looking it up, I'm sorry if anyone wants me to, but I just don't care enough to put in that kind of effort for Michael Bay movie stuff. But general proportions wise, I think it's clear which one is the worst off here. It's clearly the uh, MB07, which I will say, as weird and goofy as this thing looks, I actually still really like it. And yeah, I know, the legs are extremely scrawny, the arms are extremely huge, and it's just this really weird imbalance of proportions on the figure, but I like it. New Age, I think, from what I understand, is the most movie accurate in terms of the detailing and proportions and all of that. But when it comes to just the general silhouette, the general shape of the figure as a humanoid robot, I actually prefer the Studio series, because he's got a little bit more of a bulk to him. He looks a little bit more imposing. This guy's definitely bulkier overall than this one, but I just, I like the sort of burliness that the Studio Series version has. But the Studio Series figure does have its weaknesses. Not the least of which is it's got the least articulation out of all of them, and also it's tiny. It's uh, also got this rather egregious turtle shell on his back. But it does have some nice detailing. Now this one I did attempt to do some uh, customizing on. I did some dry brushing with sort of like a gunmetal paint and then also a silvery paint on top of that. So the deco on this guy is a little bit different than how he is out of the box. But as I said, I prefer the proportions of this guy compared to the other two just because he's got that kind of bulky bruiser look, which may not be right for Soundwave, but I don't care. I just think aesthetically it's cooler to me. He does have a lot of nice little details in there. He's got his little speakers inside the, uh, the chest cavity. Overall, he is just a neat figure. Not the best out of these three, <laughs> but he is pretty neat. Taking a look at the MB07 Soundwave, it's, again, lots of nice detail. Uh, the, it does have a lot of similar design elements with like the speakers around the chest area, this little circular thing in the pelvis and little speaker bits around elsewhere. The general shape of the thigh plates. A lot of the stuff here is the same and what you would expect, but it's definitely off in the proportions. Comparing them to the Studio Series, you can see what I'm talking about with like the thigh plates, where the shape is there, but it's definitely the wrong part of the car. This is not the back of the car that it is here. I still think it works for what it is, but it's definitely not as accurate-ish. You could definitely do with some more detailing in these areas that are just like flat black or flat gray plastic, but the silver definitely pops very nicely, and he does have that sort of sound wave crown, though the heads, I don't know, it's, it's a toss-up between these two, because this one 
He doesn't have that kind of semi-annoying mouth opening gimmick, and also his head is just sculpted with two eyes, whereas this one, they were working off of the Human Alliance mold, so his eyes are actually painted on a visor. It's hard to tell, especially since I don't have the uh, standard Human Alliance figure to compare him to, but it's actually one visor going across there, and then they just dotted the eyes in place. And lastly, we come to the reason I wanted to do this video, because this was the figure that I really wanted to talk about. And yeah, Mista, Mista, whatever, is really interesting. The legs are definitely a bit of a mess. There's a lot of hinges and stuff in here. It's kind of fiddly, because like these don't lock in place at all. They just kind of wiggle around and they're really easy to bump out of place, but they're also easy to bump back in. The hip plates also don't lock in, they just kind of sit. There's a lot of stuff on this figure that just kind of sits, and you can knock it out of place and then have to push it back in place, and it's not ideal, but given everything that this thing does, I'm fine with it. It's a small price to pay. Anyway, getting back to those legs, I feel like the shape of the legs is pretty good. It definitely is more in line with the Studio Series than it is with the MB07, because yikes. But while the legs have the appropriate bulk and shape, it's just when you get in close and look at them, you start to realize it's just kind of a mess of parts loosely cobbled into a general shape that give you that, uh, that impression. I think what they did with the toes is pretty neat, with these bits here coming together to give him more defined feet, but the shins are... they're not great. The thigh areas, though, that's a bit better, because you've got the plates covering stuff up, but even if you move the plates out of place a bit, you can see that there is some nice detailing in here. Some nice painted detailing as well. And he also has that sort of, I guess we can call it standard at this point, uh, movie sound wave pelvis section with that circular bit there. This is clearly much more in line with the Studio Series again, because they're more of that upside down triangular shape, and a lot of the molded details are similar. Whereas the uh, MB07 is just kind of like a straight line going down. <laughs> but limitations, the toy's old, that kind of thing. And the arms are definitely uh, less bulky proportionally than either of the other two figures. They're lanky, but they're more normal looking arms. These arms are extremely huge, and these arms are definitely bulky. Like I said, I prefer the bulkiness of this guy, but this guy pulls it off really well too. And again, some really nice detailing, really nice painted detailing. He does kind of have a mishmash of the shoulders that you get on either of the other sound waves, where this one is more... it's not really enclosed, you can kind of see the molding that hints at that little triangular bit that kind of folds over the shoulder, which we get right there on the New Age version. And then this one doesn't have the triangular bit at all, but it does have this entire plate kind of fold over, and then you get this that I think is meant to kind of evoke that. When it comes to the chests, the New Age version is, I think, more accurate in that it kind of comes together the right way. Now, the Studio Series is definitely not. It doesn't have the bits that kind of fold in over and around the manufacturer logo. And then the MB07 does do that, but at the expense of the chest being extremely thin and wide. And now looking at the New Age head, that is, again, kind of in line with what we've been seeing with the other two in terms of Soundwave's head design, where he's got that kind of strange crown. Here, though, the horns point in ever so slightly on the edges, whereas in the other two, it's actually different for the other two as well, because the Studio Series, the horns go straight up. The MB07, they go kind of out ever so slightly. So I have no idea which of those three is the correct design. The thing with this is I like the detailing on the New Age head a lot and also the range is great. But the thing that kind of bugs me about this one is it feels a little too rounded around the forehead. It's just ever so slightly less imposing to me. It feels softer in a way, just sculpt-wise. I still feel like the sound wave would easily murder Bumblebee if given half the chance, but the rest of the detailing is nice and I love that they got like the red eyes in there, even around the sides that darker shade of kind of a gunmetally gray for these bits, and also, of course, the kind of gold coppery color for... could be the ears? I don't know. I briefly mentioned the back on Studio Series Soundwave. Now he's got that turtle shell, and you can see that for MB07, 
the back there is also a bit of a mess where you've got the windshield and hood of the car mode and then decent chunks of the top and sides of the car mode on the backs of either bicep. So it's a little bit, a lot bit messy. And then for the new age version, I'd say that is a lot cleaner. I'm not 100% as I've said many times on how accurate this is to the movie, but this is so much cleaner when compared to the other ones. The backs of the legs are about as much of a mess as the fronts of the legs, but what's going on up here, kibble-wise, is pretty nice. Like, those doors fold up and tuck in really nicely along the back. You've got these panels kind of along the backs of the uh, shoulders as opposed to on the MB07 where they kind of wrap around the side and front. I think definitely handles his kibble well, and I would hope so considering how much of that kibble has to shift around in many different ways in order to get between the car and uh, robot modes. In terms of articulation, yes, we're going to talk about articulation because we're doing a comparison, so why the heck not? Let's start with the Studio Series because that is the weakest of all of them. You've got rotation around the shoulder, arms can go out, 90 degree bend at the elbow, you've got the bicep rotation. Nothing is going on at the waist because of the way that it transforms. You do have thigh rotation as well as forward and backward. You can get out, but these spiky bits kind of butt into the uh, torso, so you kind of have to angle them. You can get them pretty far out going this way and okay going that way, but like straight out, it's not really happening. A little less than 90 degrees on the knee, and that's it for the body. For the head, that's where I'm most disappointed about the Studio Series figure because it has this kind of hinge that you're supposed to use in transformation to kind of help get the head around as you're uh, kind of transforming it, like wedging it into different places, but that hinge kind of makes it a little bit tricky. I haven't been able to find a good position for that hinge to allow the head to turn with any decent amount of degree. Like, as you start to turn the Studio Series head, it just, it wants to go up. And that is extremely annoying. Also, one last thing to mention about the Studio Series, which I forgot, is his shoulders are extremely far back. If you look at the line of his body, his arms should be up here and not hanging off of his backpack, basically. But when you're looking at it from the front, it's no problem. But yeah, articulation on the Studio Series is not the best. As for the MB07, it's kind of better and not better in some regards. For one thing, the head can actually rotate. Can't look up or down, though. You can just kind of open the mouth, but I'm already into it because he can actually turn his head 90 degrees left and right. The arms, though, are definitely hindered because of all the junk going on here. If you move this out of the way and kind of move this, you can do the uh, full rotation. You can bring the arms out. Not quite as far as the Studio Series. You get a deeper elbow bend, which is good. It's uh, just past 90, but still better than the Studio Series. And then you get the uh, rotation at the bicep or just above the elbow. And he actually has finger articulation due to the transformation. So you can move his thumb and the two fingers are together. You can't move them separately, but you can get some hand poses going, which is pretty cool. I also forgot to mention on the Studio Series, the hand can go in, but you kind of have to move this panel out of the way to do it. So yeah, it doesn't really, doesn't really work that well. Getting back to the MB07, the legs can do the forward and backwards thing. They can go out. Look at that. So they've already got the Studio Series beat. You've got the thigh rotation. There's a pretty decent knee. You get what basically counts as ankle tilt from two different hinges. So you can kind of mess around with those. And then the toes can twiddle a little bit. Like you can move the heel up and down. You can move the toes in and out. And these go out to the side. The MB07 is a little bit hindered in some places compared to Studio Series 51 Soundwave, but at the same time, it's actually more poseable in some places. As for New Age's Soundwave, I've already said the head has much better range than either of the two, because you can look left and right completely. You can also tilt. You can look up and down a lot, hinge the head forward, you can push the head down to the chest if you want, that's more for transformation, but you've got way more expression in the head than either of the other two. The shoulders go around, 
if you move this bit out, you can bring the arm out pretty darn far. You've got bicep rotation. Elbow does not bend past 90, so that is a little limited. If you move this panel out of the way, which is for the transformation, but if you move it out of the way, you can go past 90 degrees. The hands are great because they've got a ball joint, so it's got rotation as well as some up and down, left and right wiggle. The individual fingers are articulated with two different joints for each of the three finger fingers. And then the thumb also has two joints for hinges, but it also is on this weird little stalk. It's for the transformation, but what's cool about this is because it's a ball joint, it allows you to rotate the thumb. So while the thumb is normally in this position, and that's fine, and it does make for a decent enough fist when you close it up, because it's on a ball joint, you can rotate it so that it's at an angle, and it looks a little bit more natural when you have it lined up with the rest of the fingers. And I appreciate that very much. Oh, also, there's a, it's for the transformation, but there is a butterfly joint on the shoulders here. You get two clicks out of it. If you go more than one, then it's going to butt into things, but you can angle the arms back on that joint, which I very much appreciate as a option. For the waist, he does have waist rotation, and you kind of need to be careful of these and like these bits that are sticking up here. But because everything's on a ton of hinges, you can move stuff out of the way so that you can get that almost full... Well, I think that is a full 360 at the waist. For the hips, you've got decent forward, decent back. The out is hindered by these hip covers, but as I said before, you can kind of hinge them out of the way. So you can kind of... like it, it looks a little weird, but you can get them out of the way to have them go way back. He has knees that are a little bit tricky, because you'd think the hinge is up here, but it's actually down here. So when you bend the knee, you do get about 90, but it's a little bit strange. And then for the feet, the feet are also interesting because there's a lot of moving parts. There's just a lot of moving parts in these legs in general, but in the feet, you do get some tilt in and out and some up and down rotation, but it also depends a lot on what's banging into what back here. Because like if you move the heel down, you get a little bit more range going this way, but then the heel's not quite lined up. If you have the heel lined up so that it's flat there, you don't get a whole lot of forward tilt on the foot. You kind of got to play with it, but it does give you a lot of options and you can kind of rotate the foot in, rotate the foot out. It's weird and it's fiddly, but in a way that I think it's, it, it works. It's just, as I've said, with a lot of aspects of this figure, you kind of have to work with it. It's one of those toys where you get things lined up and then you kind of start adjusting to get everything more or less situated how you want it so it looks more solid when it's in a pose, sitting on the shelf, whatever. Oh, and I didn't really mention it because I completely forgot, but he does have thigh swivels, and the thigh swivel is a little bit tricky to use because of these panels back here. They're in place. These do not, like, shift or anything, so his thigh back will hit his butt. If you bring it out, you can rotate it around better. Okay, this has gone on a lot longer than I expected, but we've still got vehicle modes to look at, so let's do that. Okay, was not expecting that. I think I actually spent more time working on the Studio Series Soundwave than I did either of the other two. Which is funny, considering Studio Series Soundwave is the simplest of the three, but I didn't have things lined up quite right and I didn't realize it, and so I was struggling with this one for way longer than the other two. Probably doesn't help that because I did the dry brushing on this guy, he's still a little bit kind of sticky and gummy in places, even though I dry brushed him like months ago. Plus, I'm never going to forget how to transform Human Alliance Soundwave. That's just kind of built into my DNA at this point. And I've been messing around with New Age's Soundwave so much that the transformation is definitely involved. It is tricky and it's definitely daunting the first time you do it. Maybe the first couple of times you do it. But I've been doing it enough that I've gotten pretty used to it and I actually don't mind the transformation at all. It kind of feels about on par with the first movie masterpiece, Bumblebee. There are certain things that are a little bit finicky to get lined up just right, but it's not that hard, you just have to get used to it. 
Anyway, looking at the three different vehicle modes, they are all uh, the same car, clearly. The Studio Series is probably the weakest one of the three, yet again, not because it's the smallest, but clear windows. I hate that the windows are completely transparent and you can just see all that robot junk stuffed inside the car. Also, the underside, it's like this. there's this weird void in here, but then his head is poking out like right there. I feel like they could have done something with the engineering on this guy to maybe fill this in a little bit better and like make better use of the space. MB07 is... There are elements of this one that I prefer over New Age's XM1, but there are other things that I'm kind of like iffy on of this one as well. I don't necessarily like the darker headlights on this one, but I do love the fact that the plastic for the windows is so dark that you really can't see inside. Which is kind of funny because this is the one where you can open up the doors and there's actually a place for people to sit and like a steering wheel and stuff. This one has the least amount of robot junk to hide behind those windows, but it still has those nice tinted looking windows. And then New Age's XM1 is kind of somewhere in the middle where the windows are definitely, they have a tint to them, they're darker, they're way less obvious than what's going on here with the Studio Series, but you can see the robot junk kind of jammed up in there. And that is a shame, but at the same time, because it does have that slight tint to it, it's not as problematic for me. There are some nice details on the Studio Series version, and I like that this is silver, like the rest of them. Those headlights, though, it's this weird... It almost looks like it's meant to be glow-in-the-dark paint, but I'm pretty sure it does not glow in the dark. It's just a weird shade for the headlights. I do like that they did silver on the rims and the red for the taillights. You can see that I've got some uh, paint scuffage happening there thanks to the transformations, so that's fun. But then when you compare it to, say, MB07, you can see that there's a lot of black paint detailing that's just not carried through in the Studio Series version. You know, the back's comparable, but along the sides, with all these different vents in the front, those aren't painted and that's kind of a shame. They did get the front grille, which is probably the most important part, but the deco on the uh, Studio Series car mode could be a little better, I just don't like the translucent plastic windshields. Also worth noting, the doors on the Studio Series do not flip up like the gullwing doors, um, like you can do with MB07, and you can also do with XM1 here. There we go. So you can do the gullwing thing for both of these figures. You get that option with both of these. Uh, unfortunately, for XM01, you don't get any kind of interior, really. It's just a bunch of robot parts jammed up in there. But for, like, a display or something, you could do something like that, so that's cool. The deco on XM1 is really nice too, like comparing what's been colored in black to the uh, MB07, you can see that they pretty much nailed all the applicable uh, bits. It was right side up. The taillights on XM1 are more of a kind of pinkish hue a little bit, which is fine, I don't really care, but I like that they did paint all of the necessary bits black. I've seen some people mention this, like uh, Ben's Collectibles mentioned it, I've seen other people mention Ben mentioning it. The brake calipers being molded in and painted is definitely weird. I'm of the mindset where if I'm being nitpicky, I probably would have preferred if they went with something like on the uh, MB07 where it's just wheel with rim and that's it, rather than having the brake calipers molded in there, because it is a little weird seeing them spin like that. But I super don't care. Honestly, I don't. It's a little bit strange, but one, this guy's never really in car mode, at least not when he's d displayed on my shelf, and two, it's it's fine. When he's rolling, you don't really notice, and it's, I, I just don't care. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. But yeah, the molding is nice. The sizes are pretty comparable, actually. The MB07 is just a little bit longer than the XM1. They're about the same width. Maybe the MB01's a little bit wider. 
The XM1 is a little bit taller if you're going to where the roof stops. I mean, clearly this one's smaller than both of them, so we're not going to bother with that. So looking at them all in broad strokes in vehicle mode, I have to say that uh, personal preference, just looking at the aesthetics, I think the MB07 has the best kind of car mode of the lot, just because of the tinted windows and the slightly fewer panel lines everywhere. Though I'm not a fan of the headlights being the same shade as the windshield and the other windows. That's a little bit meh. Studio Series, definitely the weakest, mostly because it's not only covered in panel lines, but it's got that translucent plastic that shows all the crammed up robot bits and this really weird color for the headlights. And some of the bits that should be painted black just aren't. XM1 is in the middle. I mean, it's much closer to this than this, <laughs> but uh, it's got, you know, a fair number of panel lines, but they're not too bad. Considering everything that this figure does, it doesn't bother me. I think it's acceptable. Plus, this one's got the weird brake caliper thing, and the windows are a little tinted, but not quite tinted enough. I do kind of wish that these windows were this tinted, especially because when he's transformed, these windows don't play into the robot mode at all, so if they were tinted, it wouldn't be any kind of distraction. Looking at them in vehicle mode, it would have to be like first, very close second, very distant, very distant third. But all the figures have their own strengths and weaknesses. It all comes down to personal preference and also the fact that if you say you have more than one, you could do something like have XM1 in his robot mode and MB07 in vehicle mode, and then you have two different sound waves that you can have displayed in two different modes, and then everyone's happy. Or if you like the Studio Series version, that's great too, and it's definitely the least expensive of the three options. Not just on the aftermarket, I think when this guy first came out he was like 50 or 60 bucks. This guy was 20. This guy... Not comfortable saying how much I paid for this guy, but let's say more than double this guy's price. Ultimately, if I had to pick a favorite out of all three, it would be the XM1. It's way more fiddly than either of the other two, despite the difficulties I had transforming this guy for some reason. It's definitely got those weirdly messy legs, but the detailing is great in robot mode. The proportions are, I believe, more movie accurate. The transformation is manageable. Like I said, if you practice it, it's totally fine. It's about on par with Movie Masterpiece Bumblebee. And the car mode does look really good, it just doesn't look quite as good as the MB07, but, you know, considering what the robot mode looks like, even though I love the robot mode on this guy, because it's so weird, I completely understand the fact that people are probably going to prefer this robot mode over that one, because this guy's got those extremely skinny legs and extremely bulky arms, and this guy's a little bit more balanced. I'm not going to be able to tell you which one you should get, but personally, I prefer the XM1. Thank you everybody for watching, I hope this has been helpful in some way. And the reason I wanted to get this out on a day that I don't normally post is because I've got plans for next month. Very sinister plans.